Columbia class. These are the submarines that you say are the present capability and future capability of the U.S. Navy to control, to command, to project power. Is, do I read you correctly? Uh, absolutely. Um, in the case of the Columbia class, which is our strategic deterrent, um, it's one of one of three legs of our nuclear triad um, that we're recapitalizing. Uh, it's it, it is absolutely key uh, because it is the, the the most survivable and it is the most undetectable part of our nuclear triad. And I think it's important to recognize that in developing. Uh, the Columbia class, you know, the last ship of, of that class will come off its last patrol around 2080 or 2085. So, you know, these are investments that the country will make that will be around for a long time. Um, the Ohio class is what it's replacing, but the Virginia class is our most recent class of what we would call an attack submarine. Uh, I often think of these as kind of the underwater fighters, uh, if you want to use an aviation uh, analogy. They're quiet, they're stealthy, uh, they can launch missiles ashore, or they can use torpedoes. They're ideal for, it's because of their self. So, and, and I often uh, think of submarines using a chess analogy as the invisible queen. It does so many things, just like the queen on a chessboard, but the difference with the submarine is nobody knows where it is. And so I think that's what gives the submarine tremendous uh, value, tremendous capability and flexibility. I want to stay with submarines because I've heard anecdotes, and, I'm, and now I'm talking to somebody who, who, who deals with the data here. I've been told that the Russians, since this revival of a conflict over Ukraine and expanded into what some regard as a face-off with NATO, that the Russians are now deploying, sorting their submarine fleet out of the north into the Atlantic. Is that accurate? And uh, the Virginia class, does it answer the Russian experiments? Well, I'm, you know, I'm no longer privy to current naval operations, but um, I think it's safe to assume that the Russians are out and about. Uh, if you go back to the Cold War, their submarine fleet was uh, quite capable, quite significant, and quite numerous. Uh, and I've chased several uh, Soviet submarines in my day. Um, I would also say that as I look at um, the, the emphasis that Russia is putting on its fleet, I see uh, a, a definite uh, priority being placed on submarines. I would also argue that they are uh, heavily focused on anti-submarine warfare. In other words, what can they do to stop or, or inhibit uh, the, the ability of our submarines to believe that the underwater space, whether it's with Russia, China, uh, is going to become a lot more active. Uh, new technologies will come into play, whether they're sensors that are on the bottom of the ocean uh, to listen for and detect uh, uh, adversary submarines. The use of what we talked about earlier, unmanned systems, I think it will be, uh, we'll, we'll see increasing use. And, and, and I think that the one thing that we cannot afford to do is to lose the dominance that we enjoy in the undersea. And so that's why I think it's so important that we invest in the Virginia submarine, which is the best submarine in the world. There's no question in my mind on that. And I believe it will be that way for quite some time. But the other thing that we have to also keep in mind is our submarine numbers are dropping uh, significantly. And we will hit a low point toward the end of this decade of only about 42 submarines. And so I think it's important that Congress, and a point that, that I made and other uh, witnesses that were there that day, made, is that, that we really need to think about how do we uh, overcome that shortcoming. I know Congress uh, wants to 
increase the number of submarines that are going to be being uh, being built. Uh, the Navy has that as their number one priority should more funding become available. But I really do believe that um, uh, in, in this time of what's called great power competition with Russia and China, uh, the submarines are going to be key. Um, and, and as I said, they can do uh, almost everything. Admiral Gary Ruffhead, United States Navy retired, is the Robert and Marion Oster Distinguished Military Fellow at the Hoover Institution, the Naval Academy in 1973, testifying to the House Committee on Sea Power in early June 2020 with emphasis on sea lift and the submarine fleet. I'm John Batchelor. This is the John Batchelor Show.